If you're interested in celebrating the holidays with a little bit of dairy-free coquito, then stay tuned because today we're gonna to be teaching you how to make this Puerto Rican classic. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro. And today we're gonna to teach you how to celebrate the holidays with the Puerto Rican classic that everyone needs to learn how to make. However, the version that we're gonna be making today is going to be dairy free. And to help teach us how to make this cocktail, we're joined by bartender extraordinaire, Veronica Correa. Veronica, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me, Castro. Okay, I'm super excited to have you um, teach us how to make this because yeah. you're one of those people who every year I see you just make gallons of this stuff for like bartenders throughout the city. Yeah. And you go and you deliver it and it's just something that you do that spreads a little bit of holiday cheer. Absolutely. A little Yuletide cheer, which I think is really cool. Absolutely. So I'm gonna ask you, what is it about Coquito that you think that makes it so perfect for the holidays? Well, I think the common comparison is that it's like eggnog, um, but the way that I think about it is it, that it's just the festive drink that Puerto Ricans make around the holidays. And when I lived in New York, everyone's making it. You know, you've got your coworker, your friend, your mom's coworker, like everybody's got somebody who's making coquito, selling it for the holidays. It's around at the Thanksgiving and Christmas. And when I moved to San Diego, I didn't find that. You guys have amazing Mexican food. I know, here. I know, I know. I love horchata, yeah. but I was missing my coquito. So I, I had to bring a little taste of home and started just kind of sharing it with some friends just because I think that's part of the spirit of making coquito. It's you give it to family and friends, you enjoy it over the holidays. You were just making copious amounts of it. I did not intend to, but then COVID hit and everybody really needed like a little blast of extra joy. A little holiday you know? cheer. Yeah. I actually started donating some of the proceeds to charity. So it was just kind of a good time. It made sense at the time. And now I feel like I'm kind of stuck I'm, I'm, I have to make it every year now. Yeah, but it might be more work for you, but it's more delicious for the rest of us. I Trust don't, me. I don't hate it. It's okay, <laughs> so now I'm gonna ask you, I understand that traditionally it's made with evaporated milk, but the version yes. that you're making today is dairy-free. Yes, And correct. what's the scoop on that? Well, so I'm lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. It is not because I wanted to try a vegan, trendy coquito, mm -hmm. but I also have a really big sweet tooth, and I think most Puerto Ricans do, to be totally honest. Mm. So <laughs> we like our sweets, and I wanted to be able to indulge and enjoy coquito around the holidays without having to suffer. I've tweaked, I've tried a few different recipes, and this is kind of what I've landed on that works the most consistently for me. It'll have a little bit of some traditional components to it and then some parts that I think maybe aren't so much not traditional but I've just taken a few steps away and then also as with any kind of family recipe every Puerto Rican is going to tell you something slightly different that they do with their coquito so as we get into the different ingredients I'll kind of speak to other mm -hmm. options and alternatives. And now I'm going to ask you though is this your recipe that you're sharing or are you leaving some stuff out because you know you, you have to like protect the family recipe? Uh, you know I, I'm kind giving you guys the scoop on on what I do. I mean, you know, it's always gonna taste different too. For me, mm -hmm. it always tastes different, so. So we're getting the keys of the kingdom right here, huh? Yeah, sort of, but I mean, it's it's in the, it's, it comes through who makes it, right? Yeah, you're the right, you know, the, the love comes through. You can taste the love in there. You yes. can't taste the love in there. Okay, well, what's the first step? So what I have, the most important ingredient, you, as far as I'm concerned, do not have Coquito unless you have Coco Lopez. Um, which I have a hard time finding in San Diego. You know actually. I love me some Coco but Lopez. I am obsessed with Coco Lopez. I think it's hard it's to find for some things. places, period, because I've done lots of events where I specifically asked for Coco Lopez and they mm -hmm. couldn't find it. In New York, it's in it's every everywhere. bodega, mm -hmm. <laughs> every corner store. Uh, Coco Lopez is, is everywhere. It is the coconut cream. I'm telling you, like, so. you know who would have the easiest job in the world is being That's like the uh, Coco Lopez brand ambassador. I want that job. I want that job too. <laughs> Is there, where's Coco Lopez? Are they listening? Where are they based? <laughs> Can you hire me, please? I'm pretty sure it's in Puerto Rico, right? Or is it... Yeah, I mean, Dominican Republic. Okay, mm, all right. Okay, anyway, so. It. You know, the offer still stands. I can send my resume over. <laughs> um, the thing you wanna make sure to do with Coco Lopez, though, I like to sit it in a warm bath of mm -hmm. some hot water first because it solidifies a little bit and that'll just make it easier to mix with mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But it comes with these 
handy little tops. So I'm gonna add my Coco Lopez to my pan. Some people will just go ahead and build their Coquito directly in a blender, but I like to heat all of the spices along with my coconut cream and kind of get everything into a simmer. I feel like the flavors in incorporate. Yeah, they do. A lot I could better. see that. Yeah, it's because the heat, so, you know, it activates all it. the aromatic compounds. Oh, yeah, and, and it makes your house it. smell really good too. It already smells anyway. good, and all you have is a Coco <laughs> Lopez. So I'm gonna put this on a low simmer here. I've got my Coco Lopez in there as well. And I'm showing you guys kind of like a small batch. Trust me when I say you wanna get about four of these and like quadruple this recipe. Mm -hmm. I just trust me. And we'll also have this version and the quadrupled version in the episode description down below. So depending on, you know, how you choose to make it. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're like, just like don't have a lot of friends and don't hang out with people, you know, and kind of live a sad life, you'll probably want to make the smaller version. Just make the big batch, put the bottle in the fridge. It'll stay good for a few months. You want more, trust me. Can we? <laughs> you didn't like the sad life comment? No. <laughs> Okay, Veronica, so right now, you know, we got the, the Coco Lopez on a low simmer. Yep. You know, we made sure to, you know, heat it up before so it didn't get too chunky. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? This is my uh, non-dairy component. This is where you would typically add some uh, evaporated milk or sweetened condensed milk. Uh, people, some use both, some people only use one. Um, I am using the Thai coconut milk. This is the only one that I will use because it's really nice and rich and creamy. Yeah. People rave about that brand in specific. It's I've heard. delicious. Yeah. You don't want to get any of those like boxed coconut milks. And to be totally honest, I tried doing the whole like, oh, almond milk or oat mm -hmm. milk, you know, but honestly, I think as close to the original as you can keep it, the better. Um, and as the simplest, mm -hmm. you can keep it the better too. You I know? love it. I think that's great. Um, yeah. Also, it's like this has a good fat content. Oh my it does. God, yeah, this has a really good fat It's really content. nice and rich. So you get like a really good body off of it, I But I, I do like to have more Coco Lopez than the coconut milk. So for one can of Coco Lopez, I'm adding about eight to 10 ounces of the coconut milk. I'm gonna cut that because it looks like that's plenty. So I just added eight ounces. And I'm gonna give that a quick little stir. Okay, so this is gonna be the fun part. This is where we get to put all the good stuff in. So first, you wanna make sure that you have some cinnamon. Mm -hmm. this, this is the real cinnamon, this, this is, is Ceylon cinnamon. Yeah, this is the canela, like the Mexican cinnamon yeah. that you get. And so this, I love this stuff. You don't need a ton of this. Per one of these little batches, I'll just kind of like crack this in half and let these bits kind of sit in there. That smells like my childhood. Oh yeah. And if you don't have this kind of cinnamon handy, you definitely want to use cinnamon sticks. Mm -hmm. Like you don't use the powdered stuff. You can't, you can get away with it, but get some nice cinnamon sticks and throw, if it's not this kind, just the, the like standard cinnamon sticks, throw about two of those into each batch, like per one can of Coco Lopez. So, oh my God, it already smells so good. We put our cinnamon in there. We're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna do some clove. Uh, for this of size, I'm gonna do two to, to four pieces of clove, because clove is pretty strong. Yeah. And then same with star anise. Cool, which this one? I love. I'm actually gonna do about half, because star anise is also a really yeah, strong. Yeah, it's pretty potent. Yeah, so I'm gonna do about half of one and kind of just break it up as I put it in there. Those are kind of your standard spices. I also will add a couple pinches of nutmeg. I, I'm just such a big fan of nutmeg. I like to go a little heavy on the nutmeg. Um, and then I'll add a tiny pinch of allspice as well. I don't know that I've seen that on every recipe, but... But it just adds a little bit of just, depth, you know? I'm like, you added just enough to like kind of just a bring bit. out the baking spice that's in, already in the other spices. Exactly, just a tiny bit. So once I've got all my spices in there, and as you see, I'm kind of like about this much, about this much, you know, you can always tweak and adjust depending on how much you like your baking spice, but I feel like it's such a big part oh, of what makes it. Coquito. 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 Yep. Um, and now we're gonna use your big... Teaspoon. Can I curse? Yeah, you can cuss all you want. Okay, well now we're gonna use your big ass teaspoon. <laughs> Oh, just ask this? Not, I don't even know if that counts as a swear Is that a curse? No, it's not a curse. no, it's not. Okay. This is like real deal vanilla extract, not the imitation 
vanilla, that stuff is gross. No Get yourself some real vanilla, please. You deserve it. You, you, you treat yourself with mm -hmm. the authentic flavors. Vanilla. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna give it a little stir. And I'm gonna bring this up to make sure we get a nice simmer going. So from what I understand, Veronica, you're actually gonna share with us one of your top secret <laughs> techniques <laughs> to achieving the, the perfect dairy-free coquito. What is that? I would say it's like a small secret, but I just like to add a little pinch of salt. Ooh. Yeah. I dig it, I dig it, a little savory quality. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a tiny little pinch. Nothing too crazy. I just like to add a little bit of, like, a little dressing. I feel like it brings you know brings the flavors together, you it know? It really, really does. I don't want this to taste like salt it's not gonna taste salty. salt tea. Just a tiny little... <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, and then we're going to get this to a simmer. I'm going to make sure to stir it along the way. I want to see a little bit of that froth coming up. So um, just slightly bubbling? Yeah, just kind of slightly bubbling and a little frothy on the sides, you know? Okay. Um, and I give it a, a few stirs and kind of let it sit for about 15 minutes. Okay, I love it. All right. Okay, Veronica, so it's been simmering now for about 15, almost 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I understand now we're ready for the next step. But before right. we take it to the next step, I want, just want to compliment you on your, um, <laughs> your spatula. You have a little baby Yoda spatula, Thank which to be you. honest, I actually find quite adorable. He's so cute, isn't he? The spatula's really helpful for this. Uh, the, the coconut cream kind of sticks to the side, so it's helpful to get all the little bits out. Okay, so now I am going to strain this out and kind of get all of these spices out of the way a little bit. I do, however, like to hold on to a few of these bits of cinnamon, personally. Um, a traditional way to package or serve coquito, especially if you're giving it away, is to put it in a little, like, an a, a old wine bottle or some kind of glass bottle that you have sitting around um, and actually put two sticks, one or two sticks of cinnamon in the bottle itself. Ooh. And that way it, like, sits in the fridge for a while, you finally give it away or sell it or whatever, and that cinnamon has kind of been infusing over time. So I like to use the cinnamon that has already simmered in Ooh, the coquito okay, itself. Okay. So it's a little bit less potent mm -hmm. at that point, but I feel like it, it uh... There's all that delicious goodness in there. Yeah. I'm loving it, I'm loving so it. So we're gonna save some of these. I think my mouth is like salivating right now because Good. I can't wait to drink I'm this glad. finished I'm gonna product. I'm glad, I'm gonna put these. All right, Beto, now that we've strained it all out, what's the next step? Okay, so the most important thing, after you take it off of heat and you strain it out and you save your cinnamon sticks, you wanna make sure to let this cool down thoroughly. I know it's really hard to resist, but you wanna let it cool down, at least to room temperature. Um, so we've done that, we've let this cool, it rested, and now we are going to add our rum. The fun part. Okay, okay, let's do it. Let's but we also it. have some things to talk about when it comes to the rum as well. Okay, so. I'm all ears, let's hear it. <laughs> I'm fascinated by your perspective, let's hear this. Personally, I use Bacardi Gold. That is what I have always used um, and what I've seen used. Um, if you want to use a Puerto Rican rum, Don Ku is a great option. But I think people feel differently. Um, for me, because I grew up in New York City, what we had available to us was Bacardi. Um, of course, Bacardi was operating on Puerto Rico for a while as well, so a lot of people on the island have an affinity for Bacardi spirits. Um, you can use the Bacardi Superior, the silver, and but then- you prefer the gold, I understand. I prefer the gold. I like that nice depth that it adds to um, the coquito, and I feel like it balances out with all of the baking spices that's added to it. Danku is a phenomenal option as well, um, and nobody would fault you for using either. At least I hope not. But then I know people are going to ask, like, yeah. how wild can you get with it, with, with, with your rums? Could you like so, do like a Jamaican rum? I'm a purist. Could you do like an agricole? Could you do a blend? I'm a purist. I think you just want like a nice Puerto Rican rum. You can get away with the Cuban rum if that's all you have, you know. But you want something that's like a really baseline, just like delicious. Rum. You don't want to get too crazy, personally. Okay. I'm not adding like 12 year finished in French and this, that, and the third. We're not doing that. No, it's, we're keeping it really, really Especially simple. Especially if you're making gallons and giving it to like family and friends. Yeah. Like, hey, who's got the kind of money to just be some fancy rums, you know? Hence, my liter of Bacardi Gold. So, we, for the batch that oh, we that's made. That's like a full handle though, isn't it? It is a handle, yep. 
for the batch that we made, I'm gonna add in about six to eight, eight ounces, let's say a cup roughly of rum. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in now that our coquito has some time to cool. Let's do six. It really depends on how boozy you want it, you know, but uh, start off with less then you can always add a little bit more. And then you know the bartenders out there are gonna be like, oh cool, I'm gonna add some Amaro. Stop I'm it. Add, oh, just like okay. a, a little bit of like peated scotch whiskey. Stop it, I'm telling you, stop it. I know, I, just, I know, but you know bartenders don't I know when to know, stop. And we I know, and I don't know when to stop. I wanted to do all of that too, but honestly, the only way that your coquito is gonna taste like coquito is yeah. to keep it as like close to the basics yeah. as possible, and you don't have to overcomplicate it. Like, like really. you want your like abuelita to recognize that it's coquito, you know? Yeah. I, you don't want her to hand it to her and have her be like, mm, what, what is this? What the hell is this? You know, like, like oh, damn, that's when you know you straight too far. You give it to her, and it's like it's like lavender colored. Or no, something. no, no. It's like, mm, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> like butterfly pea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, right? Oh, it's activated charcoal, Grandma. <laughs> no. Um, don't feed your grandmothers activated charcoal this no. holiday season. Because at that age, you're probably on medication. No, 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 no. Okay, so I've got an immersion blender. I think this is the fanciest part mm -hmm. of what I'm doing. This can totally go into a blender if you've got a nice, good, strong blender. My blender is kind of eh. So I'll just immersion blend it myself. Also use a hand whisk, but I think you'd be better off using uh, one of those like hand handheld blenders. Yeah, what are those? The yeah, like ones. the handheld blender. Maybe if you have that too. I don't know. Or you could put it in like a camel pack and they just do like cartwheels down the street. Yeah, go for a hike. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'll, probably, that'll sure. probably help. <laughs> okay, let's blend. Okay. Hey, so you actually whisk that for a while. Yeah, I want to yeah, get it like it. some good aeration. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it really helps with the texture. I dig it. Especially because typically if you're making a traditional coquito with the evaporated milk, you're going to have that like rich creaminess and here we don't have all of that. So I want to make sure to add in some aeration so we can get that really nice mouthfeel. Yeah, cool. I dig um, it. I think that's great. But even without that, you still want to give it a good blend, even if you're making traditional coquito with all of the dairy but you kind of want it to be the about the consistency of half and half. That's about where you want it. Sometimes I'll go a little bit lighter on the coconut milk. Uh, it just kind of depends. Sometimes you just kind of got to eye eyeball it. Kind of just like whatever vibe you're on. I yeah, think. yeah. But um, I do like more Coco Lopez than coconut milk. Coconut milk just kind of cuts the sweetness a little bit and lengthens it. But yeah, so once you've got a nice frothy kind of half and half consistency, Thing going on here, we can go ahead and get it in some glasses. Well, ideally, you want to put it in a bottle and not drink it all and let it sit at least overnight, if okay, not cool. 24 hours. So now that I've got a nice, uh, rich consistency here, it kind of looks like half and half, it's nice and frothy and airy. I know it's really, really hard I not drink to drink right it now. all right I now. I want to drink this right now, But Veronica. I promise you, if you put it in the fridge, put it in a bottle, and wait until at least tomorrow, it is going to taste so, that's what we're gonna so do now? much better. That's what okay. we have to do. So we're gonna pour this into a little jar, put it in the fridge overnight, and then we'll come back and give it a taste. Sounds good to me. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Now it's definitely the next day. <laughs> we actually didn't just prepare this in advance. We're <laughs> totally. just, we just happen to be wearing the same clothes the next day. Absolutely. So don't, don't ask too many questions. It's, all, it's a little bit of Hollywood magic. Holiday magic. Holiday magic. Yes, even better. Even better. <laughs> okay, so now that we've had this in the fridge overnight, uh huh. can I have a little bit? Yeah. Have you have have any yet? Absolutely. So I've got two cute little glasses here. I like to serve it in a little like dessert glass. It's so sweet and so rich. You're not going to pour like eight ounces of it. But I gotta be honest, what you'll often do, and what you'll often see people do, is they pour a bit, like two ounces, and you come back for another two ounces, and then maybe you come back for another two ounces. So, okay. it's like, you know, you're thinking, it's like microdosing, you're microdosing. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's strong. Yeah. I didn't tell you that, but it's, it's pretty strong too. So, this has been sitting overnight. I have my cinnamon sticks that I left inside of it, so it should be tasting nice and delicious. Oh, that texture looks wild. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. 
Whoa. All right. And then there's the little piece, um, piece of the cinnamon. Yeah, you you'll survive. You yeah. Whoa, no, I, I love it. I think it adds like a little bit of, um, <laughs> it's, it's more appealing to the eye. Absolutely. And then sometimes if you want to get a little extra, little so frisky. Tutu of the nutmeg, you can go ahead and sprinkle that on top. I told you I love nutmeg. So. I love me some nutmeg. I'm just a big fan. And that's that's it. We're all set. Can I have a sip? Shall now we? Or what? Shall yes, we? absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that is amazing. Isn't that yummy. That is absolutely delicious. This might be one of the best things I've tasted in a really long time. Mm -hmm. The texture is wild. It's like. And you can taste Biscuits. like the aeration. And the canela, like the right? Ceylon cinnamon, it just like, and the rum just paired together like beautifully. This is an absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful and delicious cocktail. Yay, I'm glad you like it. And I feel like, I don't know, you're a pro. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like blending it really, really well helps with the mouth feel. Yeah, of the it. texture it, in your mouth, it feels like someone just shook it. Mm -hmm. Or like hit it with a blender or something mm -hmm. because it has that whole yeah. like. It's like super just aerated and fluffy. Fluffy is, I guess, the word I'm looking for. It's very it's fluffy. fluffy. Yeah. Fluffy. And that's kind of how it should be. It should stick to the edges of the glass like that. Oh, this for is sure. incredible. You love it? Yeah, I, this is I incredible. You, you just blew my mind, Veronica. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I have nothing but nice things to say about that. And I have a feeling that all of you are going to be feeling the same way I do once you make a batch for your family and friends. Now, Veronica, before I let you go, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you. So, I understand that you run your own marketing cocktail consulting company? Yeah, so I do uh, marketing just in general, uh, but primarily social media and email marketing, mostly in the hospitality and spirit space. I bartended for years in New York, and now I'm in San Diego focusing on this, so I'm really enjoying it. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Yeah. If somebody wanted to learn more about your company, where can they go? My website, uh, thecorea.com, or uh, you can reach out to an agency that I work with a lot, Boys Club Creative. That's myself and Mariah Kunkel, who a lot of people know and love in the industry as well. She's amazing. Her and I work together. If you guys need some social media or email marketing help, reach out to us. Let us know. <laughs> and in the meantime, I want to say thank you so much for sharing this recipe with us so yeah, that everybody can get a little more absolutely. into, like, you know. The, the festivities around the holidays. Absolutely. I think my the biggest thing for me about Coquito is that it is meant to be shared. It's meant to be shared with loved ones. And if I could make tons of it and just give it away for free, I would, you know. So usually when I when I donate, I basically just cover my costs and donate the rest. So that's incredible. I do want to say though, I understand why people would just drink a little bit of it and then refill mm -hmm. and then drink a little more than refill because that's how I feel right now. Like yeah. I've almost killed what you poured me and I'm ready oh. for a refill because this is absolutely amazing. Okay, well thank you, Veronica. I want to say thank you so much on yeah. behalf of myself, but also on behalf of all of our viewers out there for sharing Cheers, this amazing recipe. Cheers. More appropriately, salud. Mm. Salud. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. A dairy-free coquito for all of you to celebrate the holidays with. Are there any other cocktails that you'd like us to feature in a future episode? If so, leave in the comments down below. And who knows, maybe it'll be featured on a future episode of Cocktail Limelight. And with that said, don't forget to muddle that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to dive deeper into the Craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast, which I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where quality podcasts are found. Thank y'all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week.